Council members, staff, and residents. When I was first elected the mayor of Savage, my first state of the city appeared in the Savage Pacer. Then the city administrator did them at the Savage Chamber meetings, and I was added to, uh, added to the meetings, which meant that he did the facts and I did the stories to make it interesting. With the Savage, Council, Savage Chamber not meeting, I'm here in a new venue at the city council chambers with the city administrator doing my version of the State of the City 2021. The city council is doing the meeting virtually. <laughs> okay, now we're going to look ahead to 2021. We will continue to manage the uncertainty of COVID-19 with the goal of safely returning some, to some sort of normal as soon as possible with new and efficient ways of operating. With our CARES money, we distributed nearly 400,000 to small businesses and nonprofits to provide relief, provide flexibility to the residents, and we adopted a food truck policy. Revenues from property taxes have been coming in as normal. However, COVID shutdowns have resulted in an anticipated revenue loss of nearly $200,000 from the Sports Center, the ELC, and recreation programming. When COVID started, the Red Cross reached out to us about an ongoing blood drive. This week, we had our sixth successful drive thanks to our residents. The fire department will be moving from a paid on call fire service model to a full time this year. Times are changing, family lives are different, jobs are different, training requirements are different, and the number of calls is increasing. In fact, in 2020, the fire department had 702 calls. The city budgeted to hire six full-time firefighters this year, but one silver lining of the COVID is it did allow the fire department to test out a new full-time service model to see how it would work best. Community Park will see eight new pickleball courts and a rebuilt playground. In road projects, the highlight already for 2021 is a stoplight at 27 and Conley Parkway, due to be operational possibly by the end of the week. We will be redoing two miles of neighborhood streets, somewhat down from previous years during, due to reduced funding from the state due to the impact of COVID. The county will be doing a mill and overlay from Louisiana Avenue to the Burnsville border. Liquor operations have seen a dramatic increase in revenues, nearly 1.3 million, some of which will be used to the city as needed. Before the death of George Floyd, the city had begun a converse conversations on race that were initiated by our police chief. We continue to work on race and equity. We joined the Government Alliance on Race and Equity and will use those resources to evaluate internal policies and procedures, as well as training staff and city officials. The City Council will be considering the creation of a commission that will advise them on efforts to reach across all of our population. Development is creeping towards full build-out. New building permits continue to rise along with a dramatic increase in remodeling permits. Our 190-unit market rate apartment building will be open this year and we continue to promote availability of housing for all. In the finance area, our operating levy increased to pay for full-time fire department, hiring another maintenance worker for the public works, an increase in insurance costs, and a compensation plan adjustment for our employees. Despite the city tax rate decreased for the eighth straight year, while home values increased. The city's conservative budgeting allows us to weather unforeseen circumstances like the COVID pan 
like the COVID pandemic, pandemic and the reason we maintain the AAA bond rating. We're proud to be the only city in Scott County with that achievement. <clears throat> As I pondered how to conclude my look at 2021, I received a copy of the League of Minnesota Cities monthly newsletter with a column written by Dave Lindmacht, who was a friend, a colleague, and their executive director. His column was about what is really important, and it got me to thinking. Is it the pandemic? The election? Change? Losses? Or back to school? You might be surprised, but my most important priority might not be the city tax base or a piece of equipment that the city needs, but my own mental and physical health and that of my loved ones and our savage team. You've heard me say before that mental and physical health is important, but perhaps it's more now than ever before. Our residents need to take care of themselves, seek help if they need it, and be there for their family, friends, and their neighbors. Savage has a rich history of good city government, nonpartisan, and is the type of government that's closest to the people. When we reflect on last year and this one, we will remember most the people that we met, the relationships we built, the work that we did together, and how it made us feel. Thank you.